Now, I've told you several times that the adrenal gland is a very important gland uh, in your body because it produces steroid hormones that regulate blood pressure, that regulate stress, they help you fight stress. And now you see they are now produce another hormone that other hormones that actually act as backup to the failing ovaries. Understand, as a woman grows older, her ovaries has also start to shut down. They start to age, right? And when they age, that's a normal biological function. There's nothing you can do about it. You cannot bring them back. As they are aging, the levels of these hormones start to go down. And as the hormones start to go down, a woman will start experiencing different changes in her body because these hormones are now going down and, of course, because of aging. So most of the times you realize as these hormones go down, they are supposed to go down in equal measure. But as they go down, there's always one hormone that remains high in relationship to the other. Two hormones here. We have estrogen, which is the female hormone. Gives you the secondary characteristics of a woman. Gives you the fat deposition, the calves, the smooth skin, the feminine character in you. That is the estrogen. We call her the E hormone. The other hormone is the P, which is the progesterone. Progesterone is your happy hormone. Progesterone is your fertility hormone. Progesterone is the hormone that gives you uh, the happiness, the good mood, and is actually the hormone that is responsible for maintaining a pregnancy. So it's a hormone that will actually make sure that you get that pregnancy because of the ovulation and fertility, and then you will maintain that pregnancy. That is interesting. Now, remember the happiness part. So it is the happiness hormone. That's why when you're ovulating, everybody wants to be around you. But when you get into the estrogen phase where you start to menstruate, nobody wants to be near you because you're chaotic. You are irritable. This is the time where you start having those cravings that you talk about all the time. You want to eat soil. You want to, you want to smell, I don't know what. You want to just... <laughs> yes, and you can eat. you're just waiting for somebody to poke you so that you can just erupt like a volcano. That is estrogen. That's why we tell people here to drop their estrogen. As you age, ovaries are shutting down, the factories are shutting down. Now, our hormones are going down. They are supposed to go down in equal measure. But what do we realize in most women? These hormones are going down, but estrogen remains higher in relationship to progesterone. Now, remember, Another function of progesterone is to mask or to neutralize the side effects of estrogen. What does that tell you? That tells you that higher levels of estrogen are actually a problem in women. Hello? If we are having something to neutralize the side effect of estrogen, that tells you that estrogen in excess is dangerous. Very dangerous. Now, why are we having estrogen in excess? I will get to that. But now you see, you're getting to, you, your body was designed perfectly to balance this ratio so that these hormones go down in equal measure so that you don't experience any side effects. But as these hormones go down, progesterone goes down faster than estrogen. So now we have this imbalance. This imbalance is what we call the estrogen dominance. Higher levels of estrogen in relationship to our progesterone. Once you've understood that, you will simply know where your problems are coming from. So therefore, your problems are actually coming from a higher level of estrogen in relationship to progesterone. But understand this. It's not like estrogen is high as such. It's just because they are going down in equal measure, yes. But estrogen remains highly elevated in relation to this progesterone. So yes, the, all of them are going down. But one is going down at a faster rate than the other. Why is that the case? When you ask the why, you start getting your answers. Now, ladies in the building, you are on hormonal contraceptives. That pill that you take every month that has 21 tablets and then has 7 tablets that have iron. You know it. Do you know the brands? You can mention them in the comment section. That one has estrogen. There is another one that is injected through your muscle. It's called the Depo. That Depo one has estrogen. There is another one that is put under your arm as an implant. That one has estrogen. And you can actually mention the brands of these contraceptives that I call hormonal contraceptives. They have hormones. That patch that you put on your skin has estrogen. 
Ladies, as you age and get into menopause, you get to, uh, to uh, your doctor prescribes you hormonal replacement therapy, which is basically estrogen. As you get your menses being or misbehaving, and you start getting a lot of flow or vaginal spotting all the time and all that, and your doctor diagnoses you with estrogen dominance, but they call it hormonal bala imbalance, sorry. What they are telling you when they tell you hormonal imbalance, they are just saying you have high estrogen. Now, this estrogen is coming from hormonal contraceptives, both the implant, the pills, and the deep injections, and the patches. That one is coming from HRT, hormonal replacement therapy, because you're getting into menopause and you're having hot flashes, and your doctor tells you you have to take a three-month cycle of hormonal contraceptives. Imagine that. Now imagine you're having that hot flash. You cannot even cover yourself at night. You're working with a fan. Nowadays, you buy those fans and you work with them, digital fans, so that you can aerate your skin. You're having these hot flashes because of high estrogen. And then your gyna prescribes another hormonal contraceptive that is rich in estrogen. Therefore, how is, go how, how are you going to <laughs> how is your system going to behave? You will have the highest amount of estrogen in your system. And the more you have that estrogen, you will experience all the side effects of estrogen. Because now you don't have a hormone to neutralize the side effects of estrogen. And what are the side effects of this estrogen? Hello? <laughs> Number one, endometriosis. Number two, uterine fibroids. Number three, PCOS. But we'll talk about PCOS because remember I said PCOS is actually high androgens in women. But you see, as you have high androgens, your system starts to convert the androgens to estrogens. And then you grow bees. Fat starts to convert androgens to estrogen. Therefore, PCOS is also part of high estrogen also. Okay? So this, this one is a crazy one. This is where you're getting the beards, women. This, that, those beards that you're getting, the hirsutism, hairs on your chest and all that, that's actually a sign of high androgens in the system. And that's actual, actually uh, one of the uh, symptoms of PCOS. So tell that woman who is always on TikTok, trying to show us all her hair everywhere, that she's getting in trouble very soon if she doesn't change. We have an enlarged wall of the uterus. We have the blood clots. We have the cancers. And we have the adenomyosis. All those are actually symptoms of estrogen dominance. So then tell me, how can you treat estrogen dominance using estrogen? Tell me. How can you treat fibroids using hormonal contraceptives? Again, how can you go for a surgery to remove the fibroids when you've not fixed estrogen dominance? Hello? <laughs> will, you, will you really survive? You will take them off, take two years, come back with other fibroids, even larger than the ones that you removed. So you'll always be a slave to the pharmaceutical companies and the, and, and the industries. And your gyna. Because your gyna is so much into the syllabus that he cannot even understand it. He can't. He can't see it. He just thinks the guidelines. What did the guidelines say? This year the guidelines are saying the same thing that they said last year, they said the other year. The guidelines, the only, it's only a revised version, a new year. But the same, same concept is there. They are talking about the same things. And when they are looking at your symptoms, they are just looking at the guidelines and the treatment guidelines and they choose the new contraceptive in town. Now, this is where I tell you about NGOs. Those NGOs are not here to help you. I'll be honest. They were, they, if they want to pull this down, let them do it. But NGOs are not here to serve you. Ladies, NGOs are not here to help you. That help that you see them creating things here, providing these services to women, that is just the 1% of their agenda. That is 1% for cover-up. That's PR move, the PR moves that they do. These NGOs that are bringing in hormonal contraceptives, my friends, hormonal contraceptives from NGOs, their agenda is not to control birth in women. Their agenda is to depopulate Africa. That's the reality. Let's be honest. Because they know human resources are a very, very effective tool in life. Human resource. And Africans are giving birth every now and then. Now, birth control is in the hands of the men, not women. But control is in the hands of men. Men are the carriers of the seed. So why do women take chances to put these estrogens in their systems? 
So women are feeding estrogen, but nobody is feeding is uh, progesterone. But you cannot feed progesterone. Why? Because it's nature that these two hormones have to go down anyway. So if you're thinking, because I'm feeding estrogen, can I feed progesterone? The wrong thinking. That is the syllabus mentality. And that's why they give you the, the, the synthetic progesterones. Because they don't want you to stop eating what you've been eating that is causing you estrogen dominance. So they decide, because of marketing purposes, now we have progesterone-only pills. Here they are. Take them so that you can balance the hormones. Now you see, that's crazy. Because you're going against nature. Nature wanted you, as you age, the hormones go down. So we are having estrogen dominance. Why? Why is it not just going down? Because we are feeding it. We are using contraceptives that have estrogen. We are consuming, uh, we are actually ladies, you carry a lot of water in plastic containers that are those soft plastic containers. Yeah, and you enjoy them. Soft plastic containers are made of a material that is called BPA. That is actually something that mimics estrogen. When I say mimic, I mean it is like imitates estrogen in the system. So it binds to estrogen receptors and then gives you an effect same to estrogen. So ladies are using skin products that have parabens and sodium lauryl sulfates and the phthalates. These are things that actually mess up your estrogen. They actually uh, fool the body that is this estrogen. So the body reacts as though you have high estrogen in the system. So basically, you're feeding the estrogen. Ladies are using the plastic bottles that are very soft. Those soft plastic bottles, they are made of BPA. That is estrogen. You mimic estrogen. Ladies are using things that are called the xenoestrogens. Now, when I tell you to eat animal-based protein, and stay away from plant-based protein, I have, on my, I have a, a very clear mind. Understand this. When you're trying to lose weight or to lead a healthy life or to balance your hormones, plant-based proteins are a no for you. Why? Plants cannot run away when they are under attack, an attack by humans, by insects, by animals. They can't. So since they cannot run away, they have to deduce means to survive because it's the rule of the jungle. You either survive or you just die. That's it. You go extinct. So plants, what they do is they produce things that are called phytoestrogens and they put them in the seeds. And they also produce other things that are called the, the, uh, the anti-nutrients and they lodge it in the seeds. They are doing that because they know you will be interested in eating the seeds and the seed is actually their survival mechanism or tactic. So as you consume a lot of those legumes, the dengus, the lentils, the, the soya beans, as you consume them, you are actually consuming phytoestrogens, which is basically estrogen. They will mimic estrogen and activate the receptors of estrogen in the body as though you have high estrogen. So they will top up on the estrogen levels. Also, the, phyto, the, the anti nutrients will block you from absorbing healthy nutrients like B vitamins that actually help you lower estrogen. So they will take you into vitamin B deficiencies. When you get vitamin B deficiencies, your estrogen starts to misbehave. So they block you from absorbing healthy nutrients in the gut. This is the reason why some of you, when you eat the legumes and the cereals, you get serious bloating. And when you get serious bloating, that is intentional so that you don't ever think of eating that seed again. And through that, the plants get to survive. Those phytoestrogens in the seeds are intentionally designed to make the males infertile, to render the males sterile. Because if you top up on estrogen in men, testosterone goes down. Once you have that imbalance, the men became, become women. Therefore, fertility issues go down. Sperm count goes down. Libido goes down. Now, these men are just basically objects. And when that happens, they cannot procreate. And the population goes down. The insect population goes down. The animal population goes down. The human population goes down. And guess what? Guess who survives? The plants. So it's a survival tactic. They are doing it innocently for their survival. But as you consume those legumes and those cereals, you end up topping up on your estrogen levels and you end up having all these problems. And not to forget that most of those legumes or those cereals that you eat, thinking they are proteins, they are actually high in carbohydrates. Did you know beans are carbohydrates? God is not stupid. God designed nature to take it to balance itself. And that's how he also designed the body. That the body has to balance itself and balance this hormone. It's always struggling to find a balance. But you, who likes to eat uh, the, the, the processed foods, you who likes to enjoy plant-based proteins because you are a vegan, 
You who learns to enjoy all these crazy foods and the sugars because you have the addiction that comes with that. You who is always on hormonal contraceptive so that you can please your man. You who is always carrying a plastic bottle just drinking water from morning to evening thinking that you are rehydrating adequately. You who keeps on using pesticides in your even your kitchen garden. You ladies who are chewing mira that has been sprayed with herbicides and pesticides from Meru. You are topping up on estrogen levels and then you start wondering how am I how is my period not even regular? Why am I having problems with my cycle? Why am I having problems with fertility? Why am I having fibers? Now you start blaming the genes. You start blaming God. God, why me? No, you are supposed to be you because you are eating yourself to where you are. 